Hey guys, it's Josh from Cardfight Empire here today, bringing you guys the part four to the How to Play Vanguard series. Um, I know that I have not recorded a video for a while. Uh, I've had a lot of things going on. I was supposed to go to ARG Orlando, um, and that fell through. And then I've had to deal with like a lot of family stuff and a lot of life stuff. But I'm back uh, now, bringing you guys another video. Uh, so, in part four of the How to Play Vanguard series, we're going to be talking about card mechanics. Um, so, basically, the card mechanics of Vanguard. Uh, so, we can get right into that, because uh, we have a lot to discuss. So, I compiled, like, uh, we were talking about the Vanguard trial deck uh, that we were talking about before, and I compiled, uh, compiled a stack of cards that are here in my hand that will help me explain the mechanics um, of the game. Uh, using cards that you guys already know or um, a few cards that you guys don't know because not all the mechanics are contained within the trial deck. Um, so first we're going to talk about grades. There are five grades. It's going to be grade four, grade three, grade two, grade one, and grade zero. Um, so there's five grades in Vanguard, uh, basically you can tell the, uh, so everything in this video that we'll talk about uh, for the card mechanics are some things that we, I've went over uh, in short part on the previous part, so in other videos. Um, so there's five grades, uh, grades 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. Uh, basically you start the game on grade 0, and you work your way up to 3, and then 4 is like uh, your special condition for a turn, you get to be on those. Um, in, in, well, except for like a f two cards, I think it is, where you just can put grade fours in your main deck. This is before grade fours got released as strides. Um, so you have your grade zeros. Uh, I'm gonna move all this. So, you have your grade zeros. Um, these are the weakest units in the game, uh, but they always have the highest shield value. So the shield value on the side is usually 10,000, unless it's a draw trigger. Um, so they're the weakest units in the game strength-wise, but shield-wise, they're the strongest. Um, triggers also fall under uh, the grade of grade zero. And I have the four triggers here for you guys. Again, uh, so just a quick refresher. Critical trigger, stand trigger, draw trigger, and heal trigger. So the critical trigger, um, the yellow present box, like I stated before, um, basically, when you check any trigger, it gives you plus 5,000 uh, to any unit of your choosing but the critical trigger um, adds a damage to your attack um, if it hits. Um, so you basically choose a unit and it increases its critical amount and whatever its critical amount is upon the attack hitting is how much damage your opponent takes. Um, you have your stand trigger right here, the blue trigger. So when you hit a stand trigger, you can untap a card allowing it to attack again. So when you attack with the unit, it goes into rest. And then when you check the stand trigger, you are allowed to stand it again. So rest, stand, rest, stand. Um, you have your red trigger right here, the draw trigger. Uh, pretty self-explanatory. When you check it, you get to draw a card. And your heal trigger, also pretty self-explanatory. Um, when you check the heal trigger, you basically get to heal a damage if uh, you and your opponent are at equal damage. Um, meaning... At the moment that the trigger is checked, uh, this is especially important for if you're doing damage check, because a lot of people get confused with this. Um, at the moment that the trigger is checked from the top of your deck, it is not yet considered in your hand or in the damage zone yet. So if you have three damage, and your opponent has three damage, uh, and you check a heal trigger, then you get to heal. Um, but if you have two damage, and your opponent has three damage, um, and you're taking a damage, you're on the receiving end, and you get a heal trigger, you don't heal because at the moment of you taking it, uh, you're at two and they're at three, 
Um, and then when this actually hits the damage zone, then you're at three and they're at three. So um, just keep that in mind. It's very important. Uh, it's a very newbie um, thing that people will do is they'll believe that they will heal even though you're not really at equivalent um, or more damage than your opponent. Um, next up, you guys have your grade ones. Uh, the grade ones are the units in the game with the mid-level power. Uh, they are usually ranging about from anywhere from I think 4k to 8,000. Uh, they usually have a shield value of 5,000 as you can see here on the side. And then certain units have the sentinel ability. Uh, they are always grade one with the sentinel ability. So I included this card right here has a sentinel ability as you can see. Um, sentinels are like heal triggers um, as they can only, you can only have four sentinels in a deck max, uh, just like you can only have four heal triggers in a deck max. Um, and the sentinels, the sentinel category includes perfect guards and quintet walls. Um, we'll get more into that in a later part of this video. Uh, you have your grade twos. Your grade twos are kind of like your units, um, your offensive units. Uh, usually they are in your front row. They are your main rear guards, uh, usually swinging, um, helping your vanguard out. And so these are usually the units you have on the side and the front um, as the game goes forward because they're usually your strongest rear guard units. Um, so that's it for grade twos. And then grade threes. Grade threes are usually your ace card. Um, so these units can range anywhere from 9,000 to 11,000, but most of them are 11,000. Um, some of them have extra abilities that allow them to gain power continuously, making their base higher than it is for a certain condition being filled. Um, so these are usually your ace units and what you're on for the rest of the game uh, defensive wise. Uh, being 11k. Also grade 3s um, usually never have guard. So if you have a grade 3 in your hand, uh, it's a dead card in regards to guarding. Unless you use it to um, PG or perfect guard. Uh, grade 4s are the strides. So these are the cards that are going to be in your extra deck. Uh, just like grade 3, they don't have any shield value. Um, but they have these, this power, this insane power of 15k plus, which means that when you're on grade 3, it gets placed on top of the grade 3, and you add the two powers together. Um, so technically when you stride, it'll look just like this, and whereas this would normally be 11, now you're on this, and this is 26, because it's 15 plus 11,000. Um, so those are your strides, strides going your extra deck, and they are usually to complement your ace card, or um, some of them have really strong effects that allow you to try to finish out the game or get the game going, um, and some decks are purely reliant on their strides. Uh, now we can talk about the skill effects, so I'll lay out a grade zero. A grade one. So as you can see, the skill effects are underneath where the grade is located. Now you see the first um, skill effect that we're gonna talk about is the arrow boosting up, looking like it's being held up by two other arrows on the side. Um, this icon is the boost icon. Uh, so all grade zeros and ones have this, um, this skill effect. And when you're attacking with a unit, um, and these are behind them, uh, like in the back rear guards, they can rest and add their power to the front unit. So let's say that this is in front of this, and this attacks. This can also boost, um, which is, you know, the boost icon. Uh, so only grade ones and zeros can boost. So if you're attacking like this, it's 12,000. Uh, let's say you have this in the back, and this in the front. You attack with this, it's 18,000. But let's say you had 
this and this, this attacks, it's only 7,000 because grade 3s can't boost. So if it was in the back row, you wouldn't even be able to rest it and add power. Um, therefore, it's very important to make sure that whenever you place the unit in the back row, unless it's for a specific purpose, um, you should always switch the order of your grade 1s and zeros with your grade 2s and 3s so that you can boost and make them more powerful. Um, so when you boost, um, it continuously adds power to the attacking unit for the entire battle. Um, so if you add power to the boosted unit in the middle of the battle, uh, let's say by a trigger, so if this is attacking 12 and you say plus 5,000 here, then this whole thing right now is 17. Uh, so it's the same as if you add power here and if you add power here. Um, the, the column still changes power. Um, next we're going to talk about grade twos. All right, so grade two uh, skill effects. You can see this arrow that's kind of like a check mark. Um, you'll see grade twos will have this skill effect called intercept. Um, so basically, when you're being attacked and these are in the front two rear guard circles, um, and it has the intercept ability, you are allowed to move it straight from the rear guard circle um, to the guardian circle. So when you move it to the guardian circle, it just turns into a guard, and then at the end of the battle, um, it goes to the drop zone. So um, other grade twos will have abilities. Um, there's some grade twos that have a special intercept. Um, a special intercept being that it will have a grade two with the ability that says when it's placed on guard circle, gains amount, um, gains a certain amount of shield. So you'll. So this is a normal grade two uh, with an ability. But let's say that this was a special intercept. It would move itself to the guardian circle, and usually it says plus 5,000 or plus 10,000. So this would turn into a 10,000 shield or a 15,000 shield. Um, very important. Uh, usually those come in the trial decks. Uh, one came in this trial deck, I'm pretty sure, but I took it out because uh, they're not really run often. Um, so moving on to the grade threes. You'll see that the grade threes have this twisting DNA looking icon. Um, this icon is called Twin Drive. Uh, so the Twin Drive icon allows you to trigger check more than once um, when you do your drive check. So you know how whenever you attack with your Vanguard, you check the top card of your deck for a trigger. Well, if you're on your grade three, um, Twin Drive, twin meaning two, um, then you just do two drive checks. Uh, and just like that, the grade four will be easy to explain too because you'll see like, um, sort of looks like twin drive, but it's like three arrows. Well, that just means that grade fours get three um, drive checks. They get triple drive. So they get to check for triggers three times when the bad guy attacks. Um, now we'll cut into talking about unit abilities and the different types of abilities. So... First, we'll talk about the blue ability. There are three types of abilities, um, activated abilities, automatic abilities, and continuous abilities. Um, the activated abilities on a card will always be in blue and has ACT on it, so ACT standing for activated. Um, activated abilities are an ability that a player um, can just pay whatever the cost says um, to get the effect. These abilities can only be used during the main phase, so, um, you know, when I explain the turn phases, uh, when you get to the main phase, that's when you can use your activated abilities. You can't use your activated abilities at any other time, so make sure you pay close attention to what kind of skill your units have, um, as that could bite you in the butt when you try to use it, um, not during the main phase, and you can't. So, um, basically... Uh, they can be used, so activated abilities can be used as many times as you want in a turn unless they have this pink um, one slash turn, which stands for once per turn ability um, in this game. So unless they have the once per turn clause on it, you can use uh, activation abilities as many times as you can activate it and pay the cost. Um, the cost for the ability is usually written in uh, the 
inside of the like little parentheses looking thing so you can see this one says um this is the icon for soul blast so we'll get into that later in this video too but it says soul blast one and choose one of your other rear guards in the same column as this unit and retire it and you see how it ends right there um that is the cost for that and then um since you did that you can draw a card so it will have the cost inside the parentheses and then after that it will have whatever you the beneficial effect or whatever the effect it is that comes from you paying the cost um <laughs> before they made the once per turn clause and put it on cards they would put um this ability cannot be used um for the rest of the turn on the end of the ability so if you're using an older card and it says that it's the same as once per turn. Um, so just remember that too. So that's activation abilities, the blue abilities. Next we'll move on to the green, the auto abilities or the automatic abilities. Um, most abilities in the game I find are automatic abilities. So automatic abilities will have this green auto on it um, and they, are, they happen automatically whenever something that it says on the card happens. So for example, this card says, when placed on rear guard from hand, boom, the skill goes off. This one says, when this unit's retired from rear guard for the, uh, the effect or cost of your card, boom, this goes off. And then this says, um, at the beginning of your ride phase, boom, this is triggered. Uh, during your turn when you stride, boom, this is triggered. So your auto abilities will have a when something happens, you, you may pay the cost and do this. Um, so pay attention to um, very specifically where your cards say that you may activate the abilities. And when you can activate the abilities of an auto, it'll tell you, and then you're allowed to um, do the ability. So uh, they will usually have a when this happens, uh, this event, when this event happens, this condition will trigger type thing. Uh, so basically it's just say when this happens, this will happen. Now the last skill, uh, which is funny because this perfect guard right here has the continuous auto and act abilities. So it has a skill that you can use during the main phase, um, a skill that triggers the automatic ability automatically triggers when it's placed on the guardian circle if you pay the cost and then um, it also has the continuous ability uh, that says sentinel so continuous abilities are always in red um, and basically they are always in effect um, hence the name continuous they are always in, confet, uh, in effect as long as all the conditions are met so basically sentinel um, I'll get into that later but uh, short term, Sentinel just means that uh, you can only use four Sentinels in your deck. That's what it means by continuous Sentinel. So that means that even when it's inside the deck, inside your hand, before the game starts, the continuous is applying um, because it's continuous ability that never stops applying because it doesn't, all of the conditions of it are met. Um, so it never stops applying. So your continuous abilities are always happening. Um, Next, we'll go through uh, specific actions or keywords uh, that you guys might or might not know. Uh, some, of the, some of them will be pretty self-explanatory. So I'll put this here as if it is your G-Zone. And I'll put this here as if it's your deck. And I'll put this here as if it's your Vanguard. All right. And uh, I'll give it a boost away here. And we'll ignore these circles that are right here for now. Um, so the first action is draw. Um, is literally means to move a card from the top of your deck to your hand. So you just draw a card. Pretty sure most if not all of you know what it means to draw a card. Um, to discard means to move a card from your hand to the drop zone, which is like a discard pile, a used pile, whatever you want to call it. Uh, people play different games where they have had a drop zone, but in Vanguard it's called drop zone. Um, so discarding is moving a card from your hand to the drop zone. 
Uh, discarding can be for an effect. Uh, a card can tell you to discard. Um, and discarding, uh, usually you choose unless an effect says otherwise. So there are some cards that say discard at random. Um, hence, you would just have your opponent choose as your opponent can't see your cards. You would just hold it up to them like this and your opponent's standing on this side. So your opponent will pick one of the cards in your hand and say, boom, discard that one. And then, boom, it goes to the drop zone. Um, otherwise, when it says discard a card, you get to choose. Um, and also, you cannot just discard randomly. You can only discard when a skill says so. Uh, so you can't just want cards to go to your drop zone and say, oh, I'm dropping this from my hand to the drop zone. Uh, cannot do that. Um, next up is retire. Uh, retire means to move a unit from your field to the drop zone. So if a card retires, uh, in this shadow following deck in specific, they retire their own rear guards for abilities. So if you use the ability of this to retire this, boom, this is gone. And then this gets an ability when it's retired. So retire means to move a card from your field to drop zone. Um, and then if at any time a unit moves from your field to the drop zone, that unit is considered retired, no matter if it said that it was being retired or not. So um, in Vanguard, you can place units over other units. And when you place something in the same circle, uh, it dies. So this would still be considered retired. Um, the next um, keyword is place. Um, place means to move a card from a non-circle zone to a circle zone, meaning there are six circle zones like I discussed before, um, where you have one Vanguard circle, five rear guard circles, and a guardian circle. So if you place it, it's moving any, anywhere from those circles to a circle. So from your deck, from your drop zone, from your hand, from your G zone, um, any of those to a circle is called placing the card. Um, and some units have abilities that say when this unit is placed on rear guard circle or when this unit is placed on vanguard circle, and that's when you know when it's placed, uh, when you move it from anywhere else to a circle. So the second it hits that circle, boom, that ability goes off, and that's an auto ability because it'll say, when this unit is placed on rear guard or when this unit is placed on vanguard, boom, this ability activates. Um, to heal uh, means to heal a damage. Uh, so to heal a damage, you move a card from your damage zone to your drop zone. Pretty self-explanatory. Uh, to reveal means to show the cards to all players at that time. So since there are only two players in vanguard, to reveal means to show to both players. So there will be, you know, every time you have a search ability, um, which search is the next key thing that I'm gonna go through, but search basically means to look through uh, cards in a certain zone and obtain a card. So if it says to search your deck for, I don't know, let's say it says search your deck for a dry card Loire, I would look at my entire deck and then I would get this card and I would usually reveal it to my opponent just to make sure that I actually added that card and not something else. And then after you reveal it, it would go wherever you specify. So, um, reveal means to show all cards to all players. Uh, when you're revealing as a cost, you decide all the costs first and then you reveal the cards at the same time when the other cost is paid. Um, if an effect um, asks you to reveal cards, then you have to reveal them until the entire effect is over. Um, revealing cards also do not change the zone that they are in. So if you reveal a card from your deck, it um, even if you lift it up like this, it does not change the fact that it's still considered in the deck. Um, that's very important too. So to search, um, like I said before, is to look through cards in a specified zone to find an appropriate card, meaning that when you search a card, you're just looking through a zone to find a card uh, that an effect tells you to get. Um, to shuffle means to randomize the order of cards in any zone. So usually you're only shuffling your deck. Uh, anything else doesn't really matter, but shuffling is just changing the order of your deck. There are many different ways to shuffle. You just change the order of your deck. Uh, you cannot shuffle unless a card specifies. So you cannot just, you know, randomly feel like it and pick up your deck and shuffle it. 
Um, unless you drop a card or your deck knocks over or something like that, your opponent sees your cards. And then when both players agree, you can shuffle. Uh, to stand and rest, I went over that when I was talking about the sand trigger. So um, this vertical, uh, if it's in vertical, it's in stand position. And if it's in horizontal, it's in the rest position. Um, stand and rest is, you know, just states that they are in. So this is the stand state. This is the rest state. Um, turn up, turn face up, or turn face down. Um, Self-explanatory. If it tells you to turn the card face up, this is face up. If it tells you to turn the card face down, this is face down. Um, drive check is like we went over before when your vanguard attacks you reveal the top card of your deck and if it has a present box in it uh, effects are applied if not then the card just goes to your hand um, something to note when a trigger is checked during your drive check um, the effects are applied immediately so if there are more than one drive check in that um, drive check like if you have twin drive or triple drive and you get a trigger but there's still more checks to go you have to resolve the triggers effects before you move on to the next one so let's say that this was a trigger uh you would have to say let's say it's a critical trigger or actually let's say that it's a draw trigger so you say five thousand power to this and i draw a card and then you go to the next card so it's a very important because here if you got a draw trigger um if you applied the effects after then you would go check check and this would be your twin drive but if you did the draw trigger, then you got draw trigger, draw trigger, boom. And then uh, you would get a draw trigger for this check too because you drew this card. So that's very important um, for drive checks. So damage check is same thing as drive check, but it's just when you're taking a damage. Check for a trigger and then it goes to your damage zone. Um, a damage check is performed for any kind of damage. Uh, whether it's skill damage or battle damage. So battle damage is from being attacked. Uh, skills are, there are some skills in the game, like abilities that uh, tell you to deal a damage to your opponent or to yourself. Um, so damage checks are performed for everything, but there are some skills that nullify damage checks. Um, so be wary of that. Um, to bind a card means to move a card from a specific zone to the bind zone. Bind zone is, doesn't really have an exact, it has a zone, but it doesn't have an exact position on the board. So I usually just put it above my deck and say that that's the bind zone. If uh, Usually Narukami um, is the clan that has to do with binding cards and Nubatama, um, the ninja clan. So... Uh, bind, bind zone is rarely used unless you're playing those two clans, um, but if it tells you to move to the bind zone, then you know uh, that's the bind zone. Uh, to battle means to choose a unit being, uh, battle, the keyword itself, means to choose a unit being attacked. So let's say that you say, I'm attacking your vanguard, then you're, while you're in this state, you're battling your opponent's vanguard. Um, there are some cards, the reason why that's important is there are some cards in the game that say um, they change what you attack without um, without your wanting them to. So there's a card in um, a clan called Link Choker where if you attack, it can actually change the target of your attack and redirect it to like a rear guard or something, which is very important because if they redirect your attack to a rear guard, your vanguard does not take damage. Um, so it's very few units in the game that can change um, with the unit you're battling, but there are units in the game that can change uh, the unit that you're battling, so be aware of that. Um, to give, uh, give, get, and lose. So to give um, basically means that it says, like if there's an ability that says your unit gains this. Um, ability and then it has it will usually have an ability in a red text or ability following that and you can give another unit an ability that it didn't have in the first place because another card tells you to give an ability um to lose means that you lose an ability just like the opposite so if you lose uh, your 
skill, it's nullified usually till the end of the turn or until a specified time. It's usually the end of the turn um, if you use an ability or if you lose an ability. Um, and same with get. Get is basically the same as get. To declare is uh, basically to point out information uh, specified by a card. So there are cards that tell you to declare a card name. Um, there is a deck called Magus where all of their effects focus on um, guessing the top card of your deck. Where really it's not guessing because some of the skills tell you what the top card of your deck is. But um, an example is in that deck, you'll say declare a card that's on the, uh, or declare a card name. Um, and then you declare it. And then if the card name is what you called it to be, then you get a certain ability. So let's say that this was um, the Magus deck and Drag Saber Erzus is on the top of my deck. So it says declare a card. I declare Drag Saber Erzus. Then I flip it, ooh, look at that. It's Drag Saber Erzus. Um, so I would get whatever ability that it's telling me to because I declared it. Um, so declare is basically just pointing out information. Um, Soul Blast. Um, Soul Blast is when you have a card in your soul. Uh, so the soul, again, is what's underneath your vanguard uh, from riding and stuff like that. So um, also when you're riding, I forgot to mention that, but uh, I mentioned in a previous video, when you ride, you during your ride phase, you place a unit that is one grade or higher um, or the same grade or one higher, sorry, than what your current vanguard is, you can ride a new vanguard. Uh, so that's important. Um, so Soul Blast, getting back to Soul Blast. Uh, when you have a card in your soul, you move a card from your soul to the drop zone to perform Soul Blast. Now Soul Blast will have an amount on it. It will look just like... Blast will look just like this. Uh, the blue that we talked about earlier has like a blue arrow moving out of the soul. Um, the V on the card stands for Vanguard and then it says to move it out. So move the card um, out of your soul and that's Soul Blast. Um, a special Soul Blast is when you need to Soul Blast cards that have certain things in its name. So if the skill says that you need to Soul Blast the card with Drag Heart in its name, then if you had your soul uh, being this, uh, this is your vanguard, and your soul is drag heart, Luard, and direct owl, Debbie Gira, and it says a special soul blast a card with drag heart, then you can only soul blast this. And if you don't have it, you just can't use it. Um, to soul charge means to have a vanguard, and then you move a card from the top of your deck into the soul. So you're moving it, um, so soul blast is out of the soul, soul charge is into the soul. Um, counter blast is when you have damage. So let's say that I have two damage. Counter blast is flipping a damage face down, uh, usually to pay for um, an ability or cost or whatever it's telling you to counter blast for. Um, a special counter blast, just like a special soul blast, um, is if it tells you to counterblast something with a certain thing in its name. So if it says counterblast something with drag card in its name, I can do either of these because they both have drag card Luard in its name. But you just counterblast just like that. Just flip it face down. Counter charge um, uh, means to flip the damage face up. So just like soul blast and soul charge are opposites, counter blast and counter charge are opposites. Um, next up is the once per turn icon. We talked about this a little bit, um, but the pink once per turn icon that's right here uh, basically means once per turn and you can only use the ability that's stated on that card uh, once per turn. Uh, for an auto ability, the once per turn is considered to be in effect the first time it happens. So even if you choose not to pay the cost when you could do it, then you can't use it again later um, during that turn. So let's say that 
There's not a lot of auto abilities that have that as an example. Um, but let's say that this card were uh, auto and not an act ability. That said, uh, when your rear guard is placed, you can move this card into the soul and give 3k power. Well, if you place a rear guard and this skill would go off, but you choose not to use it, then when it happens again, um, and if it had once per turn on it, you wouldn't be able to use it again because you chose not to use it the first time and it already triggered uh, the skill once, even though you didn't choose to use it. Um, for an act ability, once per turn happens the first time you declare you're, that you're using the ability. Um, yeah. Uh, so that's pretty self-explanatory. Basically, Carnivore Dragon is an act stride. So if you say, boom, I'm using Carnivore Dragon, you retire a rear guard because that's the cost inside the parentheses. And then your opponent chooses two of their rear guards, retires them. And if they can't retire, uh, you choose three units in your front row and they get 4,000 power until the end of the turn. So since this is once per turn, I can't keep doing Carnivore Dragon. I can only do it once per turn that I'm on Carnivore Dragon as my stride. Um, other cards that I do not own uh, that have mechanics, uh, I probably don't own them because they're really old and barely used anymore, but there are cards that use Mega Blast. Mega Blast is when you remove eight cards from your soul and you flip five da damage face down at the same time. Um, that's Mega Blast, and so some cards will have the effect where you Mega Blast, but you... Um, you basically do that. Um, it will say Soul Blast 8 and uh, Counter Blast 5. That's the official um, the official um, terms for what's going on during a Mega Blast. When you Mega Blast, it usually gives you some huge ability, but you would consider that you have to have 8 cards in your soul, and you also have to have 5 unflipped Counter Blasts, like Face Up Counter Blasts. So, that's kind of heavy of a cost nowadays, so no one really uses it. Um, but yeah, moving on. Uh, Persona Blast. Persona Blast is an effect where you have to discard the same copy of a card to use this effect. So let's say that um, Luard, right? The Dry Card Luard. If its skill um, said to discard. Um, a drag heart luard to use its skill, um, specifically a drag heart luard, then it would be considered having a persona blast. Persona blast is discarding um, an identical copy of the card for the skill. Um, a G persona blast is flipping over a G unit. Um, if you have a G unit, aka a stride, and it tells you to flip a copy of something else or of itself. That's a persona, a G persona blast. So if this, um, if the ability of Carnivore Dragon, uh, instead of saying choose one of your rear guards and retire it, said flip up a Dark Dragon Carnivore Dragon, then that would be a G persona blast. Um, moving on, you, uh, I already discussed regular rides, so. You know, you start the game out as grade zero, and then the first turn, you ride to grade one. Next turn, you ride to grade two. Next turn, you ride to grade three. And then when you're on grade three, um, next rise phase that you get, you can discard a card that is grade three, um, or equal to grade three, so you can discard a grade three, a two and a one, three grade ones, um, or a card like this, a what's known as a stride fodder, that says that while it's in your hand, it has a continuous ability that says it gets plus two grades. So when you're paying the cost um, for stride, this is considered a grade three. So you can discard just one of the grade one, and then you can go into your grade fours. And then at the end of the turn, your grade four goes back to the G zone face up, uh, which I discussed when I was talking about zones of the game. Um, now there's different kinds of rides. There's a normal ride, 
which is when you're placing the card from your hand to the Vanguard Circle. And then there's Superior Ride. Superior Ride refers to any ride taking place due to an ability, basically. Um, you have older cards that allow you to Superior Ride cards from your deck. So you would go through your deck, look for that specific card, and then ride it. Um, and that's a Superior Ride. It's kind of like if you've ever played Yu-Gi-Oh! Um, difference between normal summoning and special summoning. Except for in this game, you can play as many cards as you want during the turn. So there's no limit on... Um, or technically, there is a limit to normal riding. Um, yeah, so it is just like normal summoning and special summoning in Yu-Gi-Oh! So you can only ride a card once per turn um, during your ride phase. But as far as superior riding goes, um, you can do that as many times as a skill allows you to. Um, next up, cross rides. Another card uh, or another term that I don't have cards that relate to because it's kind of like an old mechanic too. So cross ride is um, when you ride a grade three on top of another grade three and um, the new grade three that's written has to do with something of the old grade three being under it. So usually when you cross ride, it has an ability that gives 2k continuous to it. So it'll be 13k base and it'll have an effect um, just from this previous card being in the soul. So let's say that um, this is actually from a different clan. But let's say that this machining tarantula MK2, let's say that um, Dragheart Lord says that when you ride it, if you ride over one of these, or if you have this in the soul, then it gets 2k power continuously. Um, so it would be a 13k even on defensive turns, uh, which is important for guarding. Uh, a break ride uh, would be a grade 3 that has a skill that when this unit uh, is ridden upon, uh, you would give, usually you give um, the new vanguard that's ridden upon it plus 10,000 power and an ability. Um, so if I'm, so let's say the drive hello ward is a break ride, boom, I ride this on top of it, I give this 10k power, so this is 21 now, and it usually has a new ability. That's if it was a break ride. Uh, cross break ride is a combination of the two, so there are some break rides that um, are break rides, but then they also interact with the card riding over it, so that's called a cross break ride, it's just combining the two. Um, you have Herald Master skills in this game, so a Herald Master skill is um, a grade 1 or a grade 0 uh, ability that lets you add a grade 3 to your hand. So this card from the Clan of Kagura, um, when this card is placed on Dragon from your hand, you can search your deck for a grade 3 with Dragonic Blade Master in its name, put it into your hand, and then discard a card. So since that card searches a grade 3, it is part of the Herald Master skills. Um, those will usually be your Stride Fodders and um, whatnot. You have Hero Sidekick skills. Uh, so when you have a hero side skip, uh, sidekick skill, it's when a grade 1 boosts a certain grade 2, so it has to boost a specific grade 2, and then it gets more power. Um, a master servant skill is when a grade 1 boosts a grade 3, a specific grade 3, um, and then it gets a certain amount of power. So if this card said, whenever you boost a machine tarantula MK2, it gets 5k power. So instead of being 18, whenever this boost is, this would be 23. So that's Master Servant skills. You have Chain Evolution skills. Chain Evolution skills are basically um, when you uh, you take a sip of water. <sighs> okay. So... Chain Evolution skills are, are skills that say, at the beginning of your ride phase, look at the top five cards of your deck. One, two, three, four, five. And then you search up to one card, and you get to ride it. And then you put the rest of the cards on the bottom of your deck in any order you want. So you have triggers here. And using this, you can like 
using this over and over again, you can memorize this, um, how your deck is set up and know what's coming. So the only deck in the game that does that is an Oracle Think Tank deck called um, Sukiyomi. It's basically based around knowing what your deck is going to be and memorizing all your cards um, so that you know what's coming. Um, there's also the Royal Paladin uh, Drangle. It's in the Drangle deck, but Drangle is a very old deck and it's not really played. Sukiyomi is not really played either nowadays, but it can still keep up to a certain degree. Um, a Jump Evolution skill is... When a grade one rides on top of a grade zero, and then the grade two, uh, zero searches for a certain grade two. So let's say that this is my Vanguard, and then this unit has an ability that says whenever I ride Lava for the Dragon, I search my deck for a Drag Wizard Leofall and ride it, or, or I add it to my hand, sorry. So um, just because I wrote this on this, I would add this to my hand. That's known as a Jump Evolution skill. A uh, forerunner, a forerunner ability, is usually on starters. Starters meaning the grade zero that you start the game with. Forerunner means that when a card is written on top of it, you can choose the card uh, and move it to a rear guard circle. So instead of it staying in your soul, you have the choice to move it back. So usually most people start with a starter and when they ride their, their first vanguard the grade one they move it back behind their vanguard so that they can boost um and start attacking for good numbers um lord is an ability lord is not really used anymore either but lord um is when um if a player has a lord ability and you don't have a unit with the same clan so this is back when they used to have like um when you could play multiple clans in a deck so this card is kagero and this card is shadow Paladin. so if i was playing these two in the same deck if this had lord uh if lava flow had lord and i had this this can attack just because there's a unit that's not kagero on the field um there's restraint Restraint is um, usually used to be on really old grade twos. Um, so let's say that this card had restraint, and uh, restraint just means that that unit can't attack under any circumstances unless you remove the restraint. Removing the restraint is usually within its same skill, um, and you would usually have to pay some kind of cost for it to remove its restraint. Um, and the reason that it would have restraint is that it would be a powerful card. So, cards nowadays don't really have restraint, um, but assuming this did have restraint, let's say that it said restraint, um, continuous restraint, and then it had act an act skill, it said soul boss one, choose one of your rear guards, this card loses restraint. So that just combines a bunch of terms that we talked about before, it combines the continuous skill, having restraint, which means that it can't ever attack, um, the act skill, um, meaning that you use it during your main phase before you attack, you pay the cost, and then you would lose restraint. So lose means to lose the ability to make restraint. So the continuous ability would no longer apply to your unit until the end of the turn. Um, Sentinels, we talked about that briefly. Sentinels um, are cards with 6,000 power, grade ones, and they have zero shield, uh, usually very shiny and gold just like this just to let you know that they are super good for guarding even though it says zero on it um so sentinels you can only have four sentinels in your deck there are currently two types of sentinels one is a perfect guard which is what this is a perfect guard says that when you it has an auto ability when you place it on the guardian circle you can discard a card from your hand to the drop zone and it makes the unit during that attack unable to be hit under any circumstances so they cannot hit you uh, no matter how big the attack is no matter what they drive check no matter how many triggers they get they cannot hit you until the end of that battle so if their vanguard attacks you and you use a sentinel then the vanguard attack won't hit but they still have rear guard attacks that can attack your vanguard and hit um a quintet wall uh, I don't have an example of that on me, but it will basically look just like a, a perfect guard. It will have the golden side right here with a zero, 
but its skill will be different. So um, a quintet wall is when you place it on the guardian circle, you usually counterblast one, and then you move five cards from the top of your deck to the guardian circle. And then all of those turn into guardians. So if this was a grade three that I got off of it, boom, that's useless. 10,000, 10,000, 10,000, 5,000. So that's 35k shield because this has zero. Um, so next up to talk about is Limit Break. Um, limit Break. You can see right here, um, you see the LB4 on this card. So Limit Break is an ability that you can only uh, use when you are at four damage. Or really Limit Break only has LB4 um, but if it ever said like LB2 or LB3 or whatever, Limit Break is means that you have to have a certain amount of damage to use that. So this says LB4, meaning you have to use, um, you have to have 4 damage to be able to use this skill. So in order for the first ability to even apply at all, you have to have 4 damage. Um, now there are LB5 cards, those are called Ultimate Break cards, not Limit Break cards. Um... Basically, that's when you have five damage. Ultimate break me, uh, being a turn that basically means that you're using it because you're close to losing, uh, because you have one more damage until you lose. Um, and also, usually break rides are limit break four. So break rides, when I talked about riding a grade three over another grade three and gaining an ability, those are usually limit break four. So you can usually have, you have to have four damage for the effect to work. Uh, riding over it. Um, next up is the Legion mechanic. So Legion's pretty complicated to um, a beginner, I would think. So uh, if you're on a grade three and it has Legion, uh, it says like Legion twenty thousand or something like that. In the red text, it will name a card, and then you can uh, basically move four cards from your drop zone. Uh, back to your deck and then you search your deck for whatever is in the red text and that card also gets placed on your vanguard circle so these two are both considered your vanguard from now on um, and basically you shuffle after you perform legion and then uh, during your attacking turns these two are combined so that's what it means by 20,000 because the base is 20,000 9 plus 11 um, but on the defensive turn, it only, um, if your opponent attacks you, it only counts your Legion Leader. This, so this is known as a Legion Leader, and the card that you get that becomes attached to it becomes a Legion Mate. So it only counts your Legion Leader, um, for defending attacks. So if your opponent attacks you, no, you're not 20, you're 11. You're 11,000, not 20,000. Uh, stride, basically what I talked about before, discarding up to a grade 3 in order to place a grade 4 or a stride on top of your vanguard. Uh, whenever you stride, um, you add the power of the grade 3 and the stride together, being 26 in this case. Um, G assist. Now... G assist is, uh, some of you might be wondering, what if I don't start the game with a grade 1, 2, and 3 in my hand? So, like I said, um, in my video about how to start the game, you draw 5 cards, and then you may put back however many cards you want, and then draw until you have 5 again. So, if your turn comes, and you do not have the grade that you are going to ride, you can call G assist. Um, G assist means that you will reveal your entire hand to your opponent, so you'll show your opponent your hand basically to show them that you do not have the grade, and then you will look at the top five cards of your deck, and then you will search for a unit of that grade and add it to your hand. Um, if you do, if you're successful in doing that, then you have to move two cards from your hand and two G units. Uh, aka two strides from your G zone and remove them from the game. They don't go in any zone. They're just removed for the rest of the game. 
Um, you cannot use them in any way. Um, GB, uh, Generation Break. So, Generation Break will look like this. This red ability that you see that says GB1. So, most of the newer units in this day and age have the GB1, meaning that, um, looking for some more GB1 units. There we go. So, Generation Break is a skill that can only be used when you have the required number of strides that are face up. Um, and it counts the units that are on currently on the Vanguard Circle and face up that have been used. So if this is your Vanguard right now, you're at GB1. If you have this on your Vanguard and none face up, now th if this is your second turn striding, let's say you have this face up because it's been used, and then let's say you have another one on your Vanguard Circle. Now you're GB2, Generation Break 2. So that matters because um, different cards will have different effects that say this card needs to be Generation Break 1 or Generation Break 2 or even Generation Break 3. Um, the next mechanic we'll talk about is Lock. So Lock is a skill used by the Link Joker Clan. Um, locked, un locked units cannot do anything, and they're treated as if they are not really there, but your circle is still being filled. So, like, let's say that this is on the rear guard circle, and your opponent locks it. You would turn it face down, and then it can't do anything. It can't attack. It can't boost. Um, you can't place cards over it. <coughs> and it just stays that way until the end of your turn. And... At the end of the player's turn that owns the card, then it unlocks and goes back to normal. Omega Lock means that a card is locked and will not unlock even after the end of your turn. It will unlock two turns, or like, yeah, two turns from when it's locked. So if it gets locked on your opponent's turn, if your opponent locks it during their turn, then it turns to your turn. At the end of your turn, this does not unlock, but then your opponent goes again, and then you go again, and then your card unlocks. Uh, delete is another thing that Link Joker has. Um, delete, if you delete the Vanguard, uh, delete can only be used on the Vanguard. But if they delete your Vanguard, you would basically turn the Vanguard face down. And your Vanguard would be counted as no abilities. Um, all the abilities it would lose all its power and its abilities. So it would, um, deleted Vanguards are always, when they're turned face down, they're always a power of zero. Um, deleted vanguards will turn face up at the end of their opponent's turn, just like lock. Um, Vanish delete is a kind of newer thing that Link Joker has gotten um, that has to do with the deleters. So Vanish, Vanish delete is when your opponent will make you choose a card from your drop zone and put it face down in your bind zone. Um, so you had another, I guess, archetype or clan that uses the bind zone. Um, so that's important to keep in mind. Uh, and then the last skill that we're going to talk about is stride bonuses. So stride bonus is basically whenever you stride on top of a unit, um, if it says during this unit when your G unit strides, you may pay the cost, you can pay the cost, and then there's a skill. So it basically just when you stride on top of a unit that says during your turn when your G unit strides... Um, it works similar to using Break Ride, and then you're able to use the On Stride ability. Um, so beyond um, those mechanics, there are clan-specific mechanics um, for the different clans. I'm not going to go into those in this video because this is a generic um, mechanic video, but... The ones for the different clans, Angel Feather has Rescue, Aqua Force has Wave, um, Bermuda Triangle has Harmony, um, Dark Irregulars have Darkness, Dimension Police has Burst, Gear Chronicle has Time Leap, um, Gold Paladin has Unite, Grand Blue has Hollow, Great Nature has Success, Kagro has Blaze, Link Joker has Vanish Delete and Delete, Mega Colony has Dark Device, 
Murakumo has Shadow Stitch, Narukami has Thunderstrike, Neo Nectar has Gloom, Nova Grappler has Rush, Nubatama has After Image, Oracle Think Tank has Oracle, Pale Moon has Magia, uh, Royal Paladin has Brave, Tashikaze has Engorge, Spike Brothers have Charge, and Token Rambu have Hamare and Shinken Hitsatsu. Um, so those are the different types of clan specific mechanics, so I'm not going to really talk about what those do right now. Um, as the channel progresses and you'll see like deck profiles and skills of units and stuff like that, you'll kind of figure out um, what they do. If you're interested, I will link in the description below um, a list of the clan specific mechanics so you can click on them and read up on them and whatnot uh, but otherwise that's the video guys and thank you for watching as usual uh, appreciate you guys watching and bearing with me uh, I know it's been a while since I posted a video like I said at the beginning but if you guys stuck through it um, thank you thank you thank you and uh, check out Wasteland Gaming um, as normal, I'll have their discount code in the description down below. Um, also check out Wind Condition Games, uh, if you're ever in Georgia. Um, Wind Condition Games and Super Games, or Wind Condition Games, uh, Super Games, and Wasteland Gaming are all in Georgia. Um, and they're all great card shops to come to for Vanguard. Um, Wind Condition Games is on Wednesday nights, and Wasteland Gaming is on Friday nights. But uh, anyways, that has been it for your card mechanics part four. And look forward to a part five where we do the wrap up. All right, guys. Catch you later. Bye.